Our topic today is the mysterious case of Tim McLean. Bring a cup of tea or your favorite drink and let's get started. The Tim McLean case is one of the strangest and most horrific crimes in Canada, which is still the talk of the hour. Who is Tim McLean? He is Timothy Richard McLean, a Canadian young man born on the 3rd of October 1985 in Columbia and raised in Winnipeg in Canada. He was a kind young man and loved by all his friends and acquaintances. One day, his girlfriend Tiffany suggested to him to work in the carnival that roams all parts of Canada. Tim agreed to that, because he loved to travel and liked the idea of visiting all the cities of Canada. And indeed it happened that they worked in the carnival and traveled to every place in Canada, and lived interesting experiences and got to know new people from everywhere. It continued in this case until Tim decided one day that he would leave work in the carnival because he was tired of frequent travel, and decided to settle down and look for a stable job and return to his country. On July 30th, 2008, Tim prepared his things and went with the carnival on his last trip, and stopped at the city of Edmonton which was far from his home located in Winnipeg by a very large distance, and he had two options, either to travel by plane and reach his home within minutes, or to take a bus that takes 24 hours to arrive, and because he did not have enough money to book a plane, he had only the second option. Indeed, he booked a ticket in the Greyhound 1170 bus, waited for his departure time at 12 in the evening, and took the last seat of the bus as his seat. The bus used to stop during the road to take a break due to the long distance, so that anyone who wanted to urinate would have the opportunity to spend it, or whoever wanted to buy food or drink. After the bus continued on its way for 17 hours, it stopped at Ericsson Station at exactly 5 o'clock in the evening of the next day, and the bus boarded a new passenger with tall Asian features who appeared in his 40s, was bald and wore sunglasses, although the time it was evening and it was later revealed that his name was Vince Lee. Who is Vince Lee? Vincent Waiguan Lee, also known as Will Baker, was born in Dandan Liaoning, China, on April 30th, 1968. He obtained a bachelor's degree in computer science in 1992 from the Wuhan Institute of Technology. He worked as a computer engineer in Beijing from 1994 to 1998, then emigrated to Canada. In 2001, some newspapers mentioned the year 2004, and he obtained Canadian citizenship in 2006. He is married and his wife is called Anna. Vince Lee was the place of his seat at the beginning of the bus, and when standing at Ericsson Station, and before moving from it and the passengers returning to their places, Vince did not ride in his place, but walked in the bus corridor and was staring at every passenger as if he was looking for someone in particular until he reached Tim and sat next to him as if he had found what he was looking for. Tim was he fell asleep, so he felt him, greeted him, and went back to sleep again. At that time the driver began to dim the lights so that whoever wanted to sleep could sleep. But the passengers who were next to Tim and Lee noticed strange behavior coming from him. As he started shaking his head with nervous tremors and muttering incomprehensible words as if in a state of epilepsy, which spread feelings of fear in the hearts of the passengers next to him. At exactly 8.30 in the evening, he pulled out a large knife from his pocket and stabbed Tim brutally with separate stab wounds in his neck and chest, causing a state of panic and fear among the passengers, and they started screaming hysterically and ordered the driver to stop, but he could not stop because he was on a highway. Meanwhile, he was Tim as brutally stabbed, and he woke up from his sleep in panic and tried to escape and jump out of the window, but he could not, until the driver was able to stand aside and all the passengers fled. And no one was able to help Tim, who had always tried to escape, and after several attempts he was able to run. But he fell from exhaustion on the floor of the bus, and it was a golden opportunity for Vince Lee, who stabbed him with a total of 160 stab wounds. Meanwhile, the bus was completely empty of passengers except for Lee and Tim, who turned into a rag full of holes, and the driver quickly closed the bus door from the outside, and the passengers were in a state of hysteria, crying, and panic, and none of them could do anything about Tim. At that time, there was a truck passing through the same road as the accident, so the driver stopped when he felt something abnormal happening. And when he got off and knew the story, he and the bus driver and one of the passengers tried to attack Lee and save what was left of Tim. They brought a large piece of iron and got on the bus and stood at the beginning of the corridor and tried to threaten him, but he did not care about them. 
The looks of his eyes are full of evil and terrify them, and he cut off Tim's head and started waving it at the three men, which led them to quickly get out of the bus and close it from the outside again. Lee tried to escape by bus, but he could not drive it. A report came to the Canadian police about the accident, but they arrived late, and the bus was surrounded by policemen. The strange thing is that they stayed around it for five hours, refusing to attack Lee. It is possible that they were waiting for the perpetrator to calm down completely, especially after they made sure that Tim was dead and the evidence was his severed head. Meanwhile, Lee began to cut and tear Tim's belly meat and ate it brutally, repeating a sentence, I must stay on the bus forever. And he began to eat parts of his liver, kidney, and a large part of his arm and Lee tried to escape again by driving the bus. But he failed again, and here the policemen intervened and fired electric shocks at him and were able to handcuff him with iron shackles and take him to the police station. When the policemen got on the bus to inspect the crime scene, they found Tim's body parts scattered and his blood filled the place, and later they found his ear and nose in Lee's pocket. The investigations began with Lee, who was 41 years old, who justified his action by saying, he heard the voice of God telling him that McLean is a follower of Satan and commanding him to kill him. He said that God began speaking to him since 2004, and after an examination of Lee by psychiatrist Stanley Wren, it became clear he suffers from severe schizophrenia. So he was transferred to a psychiatric hospital for a while, but he was released in 2015 after making sure that he did not pose a threat to society and put him under observation and make sure that he takes his medications in his private apartment in Winnipeg. This decision was objected to by McLean's mother, Carol Dedell, who considered his release an extreme insult to Tim and his family. The end thanks for watching. Don't forget subscribe.